Hey guys, I'm back at it again. Unfortunately, I've deleted the whole footage I had beforehand. So now here I am doing it in a less polished way. Doing it in a voiceover instead of the whole IRL footage that I usually have. So forgive me if the videos are a little bit less polished. But then again, my viewers are never that good. At least I think so. So yeah, that's what's going on for the rest of the video. And that's why you can never actually see my face for the whole thing. Once again, jumping right back into it, we are here with Rare, who made Banjo-Kazooie, and after the success with Banjo-Kazooie, they made the next game called Banjo-Tooie, which, as you can guess, is the sequel to Banjo-Kazooie. In terms of the story, it's very simple, just like the first game. It follows where the first game ended, actually, with Gruntilda falling to her death, and I mean that literally, because she's just literal bones at this point. Being rescued by her sisters, lifting the big heavy rock that Klungo wasn't able to lift in the last one. As soon as they do so, Gruntilda immediately attacks Banjo, Kazooie, and the rest of the gang. And actually killing, not Banjo, Kazooie, but Bottles. And that's basically it. It's just Banjo going to stop Gruntilda once again before she's able to use the machine that she made to drain everything of life itself. Following the collectibles, there's really nothing new besides the Globos, which are these small magical little creatures that you can give the Mumbo or the new added character, Wumba, to do any magical activity. And yes, you heard me right, Mumbo is actually playable, except you can only do certain things with him. He's basically just a character that you can move around that has cutscenes at play when he goes to a certain area. Other than that, that's really about it, and it kind of sucks since he's a whole shaman and magic is his thing, and all you really do with the character is go and play a cutscene and then go back to play as Banjo-Kazooie. Speaking of Banjo-Kazooie, in this game, they actually learn a lot more moves, that being the split up pads, we can actually split up Banjo and Kazooie, so you can play each one individually, and upon playing each one individually, you have Banjo, which can actually make use of his backpack for all of his moves. That being a move where he can sleep and heal, a move where he just uses his backpack as a, a jumping sack, essentially, and a move where he can actually put shit in a backpack. One where he can wear his backpack as a shield and defend himself against any type of liquid, and use his backpack to attack stuff. Kazooie also has her own set of moves. One of them being using her wings to attack, and then using her body as a torpedo-like submarine thing, and then followed by hatching eggs, and then the last, but most definitely the most important, being able to glide, since she is a bird. One of the new add-ons in the game is these portals, which you can use to teleport to a different portal in said world. Now this game being on the N64, it's sometimes hard to believe because Rare actually knew exactly what they were doing, in fact, if you just look at the gameplay alone, the quality, the animations, the sound effects, even just the graphics itself, really did take a step above Azure Kazooie, and it really does show. Unfortunately, upon showing this, there are a lot of places, especially depending on which version of the game you play, that there's just a shit ton of lag, and in fact, through each cutscene, it just feels like the game is going to crash at any given moment. Going into the game, I knew that there was a huge amount of the fans that liked it, disliked it, or even hated it. And I fall in between the middle, because this game, there's two versions of this game, I like to think. The first version is the one you just play it. You just play it from start to ending, and it's amazing. I do think it's legitimately better than the first one, but... There is the other half of the game where if you try to 100% it like the first game, it is total dog shit. And what I mean by that is there's so much backtracking that it's just absolutely annoying. And it's making your time in the game just go longer, longer, and longer. And another thing is that the worlds also make it a slog to just play. Because these worlds are gigantic to a fault. And this is what the 
fans are talking about when they say they don't like this game. And that's why I like to view it as there's two different versions of the game. One where you just play it and have an amazing time. In fact, this is probably my favorite Banjo and Kazooie game, even though there's only a handful of them left. But if I do do the 100% route, this game does fall probably even below nuts and bolts. Then again, I haven't played that game, so I can't really say for certain, but you get the picture. Going into the final part of the game, it's followed by another quiz segment, which, mind you, it's not as bad as the first one. In fact, this is what I imagine the first one being. Just a lot more simple and effective. And just before you say that it's over, in the final boss fight, okay, the final boss fight, I actually really do like it. It's difficult, it's challenging, but there's one thing I absolutely hate that the actual creators of the game did. There's a FPS section of the fight. In fact, it's for the whole fight. Well, you have to hit Gruntilda on her tank. And you're probably thinking, why is that a bad thing? Well, the reason that's a bad thing is because the controls are inverted. And there's actually no reason to change the uh, controls. There's no way to change them. So you're stuck with them, with left being right, right being left, up being down, down being up. And it's just really confusing, and the fact that it's in such a fast-paced motion, that you only have so amount of seconds to actually hit Gruntilda, that it just becomes a slog, and it's just absolutely painful to go through. Which, it is a little bit weird, because in the first game, Banjo-Kazooie, the final boss slash final section was also a little bit rough around the edges. And now we have this game where the final boss fight is just kind of broken and just outright stupid the way they did it. And it kind of makes me wonder if Nuts and Bolts is, is going to be just like that. And just to wrap this up, this game, I do stand behind my opinion on the whole in the middle's ground. It really just depends on how you want to play the game. If you want to play with a more enjoyment, you should definitely not do 100%. But if you do go 100%, know that you may be tracking in like over 20 hours of gameplay. Especially if you don't use a guide. In fact, I recommend you using a guide through the whole game. Because it just makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Even though you... It is very unenjoyable playing it this way. And with that, have a good morning, good night, where we're at. If it's your birthday, happy birthday and have a peaceful day. The next time you're going to be seeing me is, I actually don't know when. I'm going to be taking a short break. I don't know if I will come back with nuts and bolts. That's a question I have yet to answer myself. For the next game, I truly have no desire to play anything right now. In fact... I'm more into actually focusing on my Twitch than YouTube right now. So if you guys still want to see me, let's go ahead and head over to Twitch and see what I'm doing over there. Until next time. Fuck Carrie Mary. I think she broke my right hand. I swear to God. Every time now, my right hand just twitches. And I swear to God, it's because of this bird bitch.